What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Anik. I'm a classical pianist and a few weeks ago I found a video of me when I was 12 years old playing Chopin Scherzo number no. 2. If you didn't see it, you'll find it up here. And I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about what would I do differently today, hopefully better. <laughs> With 12 years, of course you can't really get into all the details and understand what the composer wanted to do. It was not a professional recording with professional mics and so on. There is of course a lot of information getting lost. So specific things like the dynamic or the, the color of the sound is not um, the same in the recording as it is for real. So I won't talk about these things. However, there are some things that you can see for example, in my posture and the, in the way that I move and also that you can hear, especially in uh, the way I feel the pulse and the rhythm. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, let's talk about something that is very obvious, which is my posture. The posture became an important topic for me. In this video, you can actually see that the way I'm sitting is a little bit leaned forward. So I'm always like pushing my body into the piano a little bit. I think this has different reasons because back then I didn't know how to create a big sound. You can actually see this in my movements. I'll talk about the movements later. So I was trying to push my whole weight of my upper body into the piano, which would allow me to like play with more weight because I didn't know how to create weight. <laughs> So I'm straightening my back and like I'm opening my shoulders here. Suddenly you will get a much bigger and wider sound. I think it was a little bit difficult for me to find a, a good sitting height, a good sitting position. With 12, the proportions of your body are often not like really, you know. <laughs> and as I didn't know how to create a big sound or a loud sound without playing like violently, <laughs> I was like trying to push my whole upper body into the piano and to play with this weight basically. I started to push my left leg back all the time so I can push my upper body into the piano more and it became something that was very normal to me and I was like playing all of the time with my left leg pushed back. And I have to really relearn this when I started to study and like really relearn how to get a good posture. I think I will do a little video about the posture because I think this is something that is really underrated. Many people do not know what is important about the posture. I also didn't know before I started to study, so let's do a little video about this. Like I said before, the other thing is the movements that I was using to create a big sound. I didn't know it, how it works. I felt like I would have a lot of control by doing this. Playing into my body with my elbows, basically. Sometimes it might work for specific exceptions, but normally for 99% of the literature, when you want to create a big sound, it's the other way around. This way you have much more freedom to use your wrist and your elbow and like everything else can breathe and open up. Um, while this, it's just no control, you know. However, like I said, with 12, you, you just don't know. And I was trying different things, you know. <laughs> stops here and it's not continuing but we need like to move all the time because the music is not stopping it is continuing to even even though it's like staying on one note or having a rest or whatever you're still continue moving and by doing this move like you, you get stuck here and everything feels very closed and very small instead of like opening up everything so I would do it the other way around so 
what you can actually see in this video too is that I was not really moving a lot. Now, music is movement and if you are not moving, it's really, really hard for you to breathe together with the music, to move together with the music and to create like the right sound on spot without like thinking a lot and like doing a lot in your head basically. But for me back then, I was 12, I didn't know so much about piano technique, I didn't know so much about how to create the specific sounds that I want to have. And also I didn't really like to use my body, you know, it is the specific time of your life when your body starts to change and, you know, you feel a little bit insecure and so on. When other people told me, yeah, you have to move more, you have to, you have to do a little bit more show and like show that you enjoy it. It was a little bit awkward, you know. There are some recordings of me when I was like 15, 14, uh, where I was trying to do more movements because people told me to do movements. However, I still didn't know like which movements are correct which are not correct I just did it because people told me to do and you can actually really see it in the video how awkward I feel in my personal opinion I think it is wrong to tell young children to like you know <laughs> it's just a little bit awkward and it feels very wrong in my opinion at least it was for me very wrong. Like now I really understand every movement that I'm doing. I'm working on every single movement that I'm doing and I know why I'm doing these movements. This is a very, very big difference to what I did before because like, I didn't know what I was doing. Just to tell me, yeah, you have to move, but not to tell me how to move was maybe not the right solution. The rhythm, my best friend. <laughs> I think I really had a rhythm problem, like not a problem, but like it was always difficult for me to read the rhythm and to like uh, force myself to get the right rhythm basically. And this is also because I didn't really understand what's behind a rhythm. Now a very special thing in this piece is the dotted note. There are so many dotted notes here. You can often hear that the dot of the dotted note, it's not completely clean and this causes that I do not really get this feeling of like the impulse on the dot. So for these dotted notes I need to feel this impulse coming on the dot. To get the feeling of the impulse I need to feel it in my stomach. So it's yum, badam, bam and this impulse comes from here. So basically I'm relaxing on the dot it's like relax. If you don't relax, it's getting very, very hard to do everything in the right rhythm and get like this feeling, as I said before. I think it was not really possible for me to like play it very clean back then because also my hands were not as big as today. So maybe some chords were a little bit difficult for me to grab, which causes that the rhythm can't be so clean. For everyone who has a small hand and wants to play things like this and has problems, the first thing I would do generally is to understand what is the most important thing that I want to point out in this music. In this case, for example, I would say it's the rhythm. It has a lot of character, so I would rather leave some notes, like just a few notes, maybe just one note away, which I can't grab, um, but therefore the rhythm is clean. Nobody in the audience will hear in the end that I didn't play this note. But therefore, everyone will get the right feeling and this is much more important than playing all the right notes and all the notes completely. But this is just my opinion. Write it in the comments what do you think about this topic. Do you think it's a must do to play all the notes that are written or do you think it is more important to like get the rhythm correct and therefore maybe leave one or two notes if your hand is not big enough to grab it. So this was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, if you want to support me and this channel, please check out the Patreon link in the description box. We will see us in the next videos. Bye-bye. Um, yeah.